in the dream. Daddy came and asked me, my precious, what is your itinerary for the week? I said to him, I am going to Turukana for a three days crusade. And posters have been printed, banners have been printed. Pastor Lomoy has marketed the program. I was to, supposed to travel that weekend to Turkana for crusade. He said to me in the dream, you will need to cancel that meeting. I want to send you to Seychelles urgently. Perhaps God can use you to restore the church in Seychelles. I woke up. When I woke up, I was troubled. I said, ah, I had a crusade this weekend in Turkana. How can daddy tell me to cancel my program like that? It was on a Monday because it was Saturday night I had that dream. I had morning lecture in the school on Monday. I was preparing to go to school. That came to me and said, ah, he started, my precious, good morning in Jesus' name. I said, good morning, my pleasure, in Jesus' name. He said, by the way, what is your itinerary this week? I said, I'm going to Turkana. They have printed posters. They have done flyers. This weekend, have you forgotten? You are aware. There is a crusade in Turkana I'm going. He said, you need to tell Pastor Lowey to cancel that crusade. I'm sending you to Seychelles. I'm sending you to Seychelles to see whether you can help with the problem with the church. I got a shock. And I now narrated to him the dream. He said, then get ready to Seychelles. Those years, the plane that goes to Seychelles goes on the Thursdays and Sundays. So I prepared myself, I called my boy, told him what happened and told him to cancel the crusade. And I began to ask the Lord, how could it be small me that will solve the problem of the church of RCCG in Seychelles? This story I'm telling you is penned down in our book. When you go there, you will see the consistency of my story in that book. I said, how could it be me that will solve the problem in Seychelles? But because God you have revealed, show me what to do. Tell me how to do it. And the Lord began to speak to me. And so I organized myself. And Thursday I left for Seychelles. Getting there, the pastor there, Pastor uh, uh, Terrence, was the pastor then because Pastor Tunji had left and Tunji was with us in Nairobi. I will never forget. When I came back from that tree, it was on this, there's a tree. There used to be a tree in front of that small auditorium. That was where I was narrating to Tunji what happened in Seychelles. He went on the ground, rolled on the floor, on the soil, and cried to God because he was the pioneering pastor there. And never wanted that church to die. So when I got there, the pastor said they have booked a hotel for me. The Lord said I should not stay in the hotel, I should stay in his house. So I told him, Pastor Teres, I will have to stay in your house, no hotel. He said, Mommy, ah, our house. I said, Yes. Whenever you give me to sleep, even if it's sitting room, whichever corner, I will sleep in your house. Because I was under God's instruction not to stay in the hotel. So I stayed in his house. I was able to have fellowship with him, to speak to him, to ask him what the problem was. And I had a lot of time with him. And the Lord kept speaking to me, meet the elders in the church. So I told him to take me to the houses of key leaders. So the day he took me to the uh, houses of key leaders. I think on Friday, we went, I saw key leaders. I spoke very wisely to them, family by family, family by family. Then the Lord said to me, call workers meeting. And everybody must attend, say it is compulsory, both from the opposition side and the government side. So, I called a, a workers' meeting. Good, the Lord had asked me to carry our redeemed workers in training manual. That time I used to train workers myself. So I knew most of the things very well. So I got there and ran a marathon training for them. Who is a worker in RCCG? What does it mean to be a worker? By the time I finished that training, Sunday was the grand finale. Brethren, do you know that by Sunday service, all the problems in Seychelles was to were solved? <laughs> 
the two groups came together for the first time. They worship. I told the other pastors that used to fight, that didn't want to see this group. And you know what will shock you? One of the powerful groups was led by a Kenyan. <laughs> of the powerful groups. So we called a meeting and all of them came. On that Sunday, the siege was over. Yeah. See, the siege was over. Come and see people hugging each other. People that could not see eye to eye. They were apologizing. Pastor cried. Pastor Terrence cried. Cried, apologizing. Maybe he's supposed to apologize. One old woman came and told him, I want to talk to that pastor, me. You can imagine how old I was that time. That should be 2000 and something. 2003, because I graduated with my master's 2004. The woman came and spoke in their language, and the pastor interpreted that the woman was saying she's happy to be alive to see what she has seen now about MCCG seashells. She said, We have been praying, we have been praying for this unit, we have been praying. She said, Now I'm happy I can go. You know when I was going to the airport, it was a bus. They used a bus to carry people to go and say farewell to me at the airport. When, when, I, when we go to the airport, tears, we will hop. As I'm going, they will start crying and we come out. We will hop until at the time I told the pastor I need to now go to immigration before I miss this flight. I remember this story that day. The church of Jesus Christ. 